Section 0 1. Introductory This book is intended for use in English courses in which the practice of composition is combined with the study of literature. It aims to give, in a brief space, the principal requirements of plain English style. It aims to lighten the task of instructor and student by concentrating attention in chapters 2 and 3 on a few essentials, the rules of usage and principles of composition most commonly violated. The numbers of the sections may be used as references in correcting manuscript. The book covers only a small portion of the field of English style, but the experience of its writer has been that once past the essentials, students profit most by individual instruction based on the problems of their own work, and that each instructor has his own body of theory which he prefers to that offered by any textbook. The writer's colleagues in the Department of English in Cornell University have greatly helped him in the preparation of his manuscript. Mr. George McLean Wood has kindly consented to the inclusion under Rule 11 of some material from his Suggestions to Authors. The following books are recommended for reference or further study in connection with chapters 2 and 4. F. Howard Collins, author and printer, Henry Froud. Chicago University Press, Manual of Style. T. L. Devin, Correct Composition, The Century Company. Horace Hart, Rules for Compositors and Printers, Oxford University Press. George McLean Wood, Extracts from the Style Book of the Government Printing Office, United States Geological Survey. In connection with Chapters 3 and 5, Sir Arthur Quiller Couch, The Art of Writing, Putnam's, especially the chapter Interlude on Jargon. George McLean Wood, Suggestions to Authors, United States Geological Survey. John Leslie Hall, English Usage, Scott, Forsman and Co. James P. Kelly, Workmanship in Words, Little, Brown and Co. It is an old observation that the best writers sometimes disregard the rules of rhetoric. When they do so, however, the reader will usually find in the sentence some compensating merit attained at the cost of the violation unless he is certain of doing as well he will probably do best to follow the rules after he has learned by their guidance to write plain english adequate for everyday uses let him look for the secrets of style to the study of the masters of literature end of section zero Section 1. 2. Elementary Rules of Usage. Rules 1 to 4. 1. Form the possessive singular of nouns with apostrophe s. Follow this rule, whatever the final consonant. Thus write Charles's friend, Burns's poems. The witch's malice. This is the usage of the United States Government Printing Office 
and of the Oxford University Press. Exceptions are the possessives of ancient proper names in ES and IS. The possessive Jesus, J-E-S-U-S -S apostrophe, and such forms as for conscience sake, F-O-R space C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E -E apostrophe space S-A-K-E, for righteousness sake, F-O-R space R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S apostrophe space S-A-K-E, but such forms as Achilles' heel, Moses' laws, Isis temple are commonly replaced by the heel of Achilles, the laws of Moses, the temple of Isis, the pronominal possessives, hers, its, theirs, yours, and oneself have no apostrophe. 2. In a series of three or more terms with a single conjunction, use a comma after each term except the last. Thus write red, comma, white, comma, and blue. Honest, comma, energetic, comma, but headstrong. He opened the letter, comma, read it, comma, and made a note of its contents. This is also the usage of the government printing office and of the Oxford University Press. In the names of business firms, the last comma is omitted, as Brown, comma, Shipley and Company. The abbreviation ETC period, comma, even if only a single term comes after it, is always preceded by a comma. 3. Enclose parenthetic expressions between commas. The best way to see a country, comma, unless you are pressed for time, comma, is to travel on foot. This rule is difficult to apply. It is frequently hard to decide whether a single word, such as however, or a brief phrase, is or is not parenthetic. If the interruption to the flow of the sentence is but slight, the writer may safely omit the commas. But whether the interruption be slight or considerable, he must never omit one comma and leave the other. Such punctuation as Marjorie's husband, comma, Colonel Nelson paid us a visit yesterday. Or My brother, you will be pleased to hear, comma, is now in perfect health, comma, is indefensible. Non-restrictive relative clauses are, in accordance with this rule, set off by commas. The audience, comma, which had at first been indifferent, comma, became more and more interested. Similar clauses introduced by where and when are similarly punctuated. In 1769, comma, when Napoleon was born, comma, Corsica had but recently been acquired by France. Nether Stowey, comma, where Coleridge wrote the rhyme of the ancient mariner, comma, is a few miles from Bridgewater. In these sentences, the clauses introduced by which, when, and where are non-restrictive. They do not limit the application of the words on which they depend, but add, parenthetically, statements supplementing those in the principal clauses. Each sentence is a combination 
of two statements which might have been made independently. The audience was at first indifferent, period. Later it became more and more interested. Napoleon was born in 1769, period. At that time, Corsica had but recently been acquired by France. Coleridge wrote the rhyme of the ancient mariner at Nether Stowey, period. Nether Stowey is only a few miles from Bridgewater. Restrictive relative clauses are not set off by commas. The candidate who best meets these requirements will obtain the place. In this sentence, the relative clause restricts the application of the word candidate to a single person. Unlike those above, the sentence cannot be split into two independent statements. The abbreviations ETC period and JR period are always preceded by a comma and except at the end of a sentence, followed by one. Similar in principle to the enclosing of parenthetic expressions between commas is the setting off by commas of phrases or dependent clauses preceding or following the main clause of a sentence. The sentences quoted in this section and under rules four, five, six, seven, sixteen, and eighteen should afford sufficient guidance. If a parenthetic expression is preceded by a conjunction, place the first comma before the conjunction, not after it. He saw us coming, comma, and unaware that we had learned of his treachery, comma, greeted us with a smile. 4. Place a comma before and or but introducing an independent clause. The early records of the city have disappeared, comma, and the story of its first years can no longer be reconstructed. The situation is perilous, comma, but there is still but one chance of escape. Sentences of this type, isolated from their context, may seem to be in need of rewriting. As they make complete sense when the comma is reached, the second clause has the appearance of an afterthought. Further, and is the least specific of connectives. Used between independent clauses, it indicates only that a relation exists between them without defining that relation. In the example above, the relation is that of cause and result. The two sentences might be rewritten. As the early records of the city have disappeared, comma, the story of its first years can no longer be reconstructed. Although the situation is perilous, comma, there is still one chance of escape. Or the subordinate clauses might be replaced by phrases. Owing to the disappearance of the early records of the city, comma, the story of its first years can no longer be reconstructed. In this perilous situation, comma, there is still one chance of escape. But a writer may err by making his sentences too uniformly compact and periodic, and an occasional loose sentence prevents the style from becoming too formal and gives the reader a certain relief. Consequently, loose sentences of the type first quoted are common in easy, unstudied writing. 
but a writer should be careful not to construct too many of his sentences after this pattern see rule fourteen two-part sentences of which the second member is introduced by as in the sense of because for or nor and while in the sense of and at the same time likewise require a comma before the conjunction if a dependent clause or an introductory phrase requiring to be set off by a comma precedes the second independent clause no comma is needed after the conjunction the situation is perilous comma but if we are prepared to act promptly comma there is still one chance of escape for two-part sentences connected by an adverb see the next section Section 2. Elementary Rules of Usage, Rules 5 to 8. 5. Do not join independent clauses by a comma. If two or more clauses, grammatically complete and not joined by a conjunction, are to form a single compound sentence, the proper mark of punctuation is a semicolon stevenson's romances are entertaining semicolon they are full of exciting adventures it is nearly half past five semicolon we cannot reach town before dark it is of course equally correct to write the above as two sentences each replacing the semicolons by periods stevenson's romances are entertaining period they are full of exciting adventures it is nearly half past five period we cannot reach the town before dark if a conjunction is inserted the proper mark is a comma rule four stevenson's romances are entertaining comma for they are full of exciting adventures. It is nearly half past five, comma, and we cannot reach town before dark. Note that if the second clause is preceded by an adverb such as accordingly, besides, so, then, therefore, or thus, and not by a conjunction, the semicolon is still required i had never been in the place before semicolon so i had difficulty in finding my way about in general however it is best in writing to avoid using so in this manner there is a danger that the writer who uses it at all may use it too often a simple correction usually serviceable is to omit the word so and begin the first clause with as as i had never been in the place before comma i had difficulty in finding my way about if the clauses are very short and are alike in form a comma is usually permissible man proposes comma god disposes the gate swung apart comma the bridge fell comma the portcullis was drawn up six do not break sentences in two in other words do not use periods for commas i met them on a cunnard liner several years ago period coming home from liverpool to new york he was an interesting talker period a man who had traveled all over the world comma and lived in half a dozen countries in both these examples the first period should be replaced by a comma and the following word begun with a small letter 
it is permissible to make an emphatic word or expression serve the purpose of a sentence and to punctuate it accordingly again and again he called out period no reply the writer must however be certain that the emphasis is warranted and that he will not be suspected of a mere blunder in punctuation rules three four five and six cover the most important principles in the punctuation of ordinary sentences they should be so thoroughly mastered that their application becomes second nature seven a participial phrase at the beginning of a sentence must refer to the grammatical subject walking slowly down the road comma he saw a woman accompanied by two children the word walking refers to the subject of the sentence not to the woman if the writer wishes to make it refer to the woman he must recast the sentence he saw a woman comma accompanied by two children comma walking slowly down the road participial phrases preceded by a conjunction or by a preposition nouns in apposition adjectives and adjective phrases come under the same rule if they begin the sentence on arriving in chicago comma his friends met him at the station when he arrived in chicago comma his friends met him at the station a soldier of proved valor comma they entrusted him with the defense of the city a soldier of proved valor comma he was entrusted with the defense of the city young and inexperienced comma the task seemed easy to me young and inexperienced comma i thought the task easy without a friend to counsel him comma the temptation proved irresistible without a friend to counsel him comma he found the temptation irresistible sentences violating this rule are often ludicrous being in a dilapidated condition comma i was able to buy the house very cheap eight divide words at line ends in accordance with their formation and pronunciation if there is room at the end of a line for one or more syllables of a word but not for the whole word divide the word unless this involves cutting off only a single letter or cutting off only two letters of a long word no hard and fast rule for all words can be laid down the principles most frequently applicable are a divide the word according to its formation no dash ledge not no l dash edge shake dash spear not shakes dash peer d dash scribe not des dash cribe atmo dash sphere not atmos dash fear b divide on the vowel edi dash bull not ed dash ibble proper dash zition orde dash neri espe dash shul rele dash jus apo dash nents regu dash lar classe dash fi dash k dash shun three divisions possible deco dash rative prezi dash dent c divide between double letters unless they come at the end of a simple form of the word a pen dash nines sinsin 
dash natty refer dash ring but tell dash ing the treatment of consonants in combination is best shown from examples for dash tune pick dash chur presump dash chewus illus dash tration sub dash stan dash shul either division indus dash tree instruct dash shun such dash jess dash shun insen dash dieri the student will do well to examine the syllable division in a number of pages of any carefully printed book section three elementary principles of composition rules nine to ten nine make the paragraph the unit of composition one paragraph to each topic if the subject on which you are writing is of slight extent or if you intend to treat it very briefly there may be no need of subdividing it into topics thus a brief description a brief summary of a literary work a brief account of a single incident a narrative merely outlining an action the setting forth of a single idea any one of these is best written in a single paragraph after the paragraph has been written it should be examined to see whether subdivision will not improve it ordinarily however a subject requires subdivision into topics each of which should be made the subject of a paragraph the object of treating each topic in a paragraph by itself is of course to aid the reader the beginning of each paragraph is a signal to him that a new step in the development of the subject has been reached the extent of subdivision will vary with the length of the composition for example a short notice of a book or poem might consist of a single paragraph one slightly longer might consist of two paragraphs a account of the work b critical discussion a report on a poem written for a class in literature might consist of seven paragraphs a facts of composition and publication b kind of poem metrical form c subject d treatment of subject e for what chiefly remarkable f wherein characteristic of the writer g relationship to other works the contents of paragraphs c and d would vary with the poem usually paragraph c would indicate the actual or imagined circumstances of the poem the situation if these call for explanation and would then state the subject and outline in its development if the poem is a narrative in the third person throughout paragraph c need contain no more than a concise summary of the action paragraph d would indicate the leading ideas and show how they are made prominent or would indicate what points in the narrative are chiefly emphasized a novel might be discussed under the heads a setting b plot c characters d purpose a historical event might be discussed under the heads a what led up to the event b account of the event c what the event led up to in treating each of these last two subjects the writer should find it necessary to subdivide one or more of the topics here given as a rule single sentences should not be written or printed as paragraphs an exception may be made 
of sentences of transition indicating the relation between the parts of an exposition or argument in dialogue each speech even if only a single word is a paragraph by itself that is a new paragraph begins with each change of speaker the application of this rule when dialogue and narrative are combined is best learned from examples in well-printed works of fiction ten as a rule begin each paragraph with a topic sentence end it in conformity with the beginning again the object is to aid the reader the practice here recommended enables him to discover the purpose of each paragraph as he begins to read it and to retain the purpose in mind as he ends it for this reason the most generally useful kind of paragraph particularly in exposition and argument is that in which a the topic sentence comes at or near the beginning b the succeeding sentences explain or establish or develop the statement made in the topic sentence and c the final sentence either emphasizes the thought of the topic sentence or states some important consequence ending with a digression or with an unimportant detail is particularly to be avoided if the paragraph forms part of a larger composition its relation to what precedes or its function as a part of the whole may need to be expressed this can sometimes be done by a mere word or phrase again therefore for the same reason in the topic sentence sometimes however it is expedient to precede the topic sentence by one or more sentences of introduction or transition if more than one such sentence is required it is generally better to set apart the transitional sentences as a separate paragraph according to the writer's purpose he may as indicated below relate the body of the paragraph to the topic sentence in one or more of several different ways he may make the meaning of the topic sentence clearer by stating it in other forms by defining its terms by denying the converse by giving illustrations or specific instances he may establish it by proofs or he may develop it by showing its implications and consequences in a long paragraph he may carry out several of these processes one now to be properly enjoyed a walking tour should be gone upon alone topic sentence two if you go in a company or even in pairs it is no longer a walking tour in anything but name it is something else and more in the nature of a picnic the meaning made clearer by denial of the contrary three a walking tour should be gone upon alone because freedom is of the essence because you should be able to stop and go on and follow this way or that as the freak takes you and because you must have your own pace and neither trot alongside a champion walker nor mince in time with a girl the topic sentence repeated in abridged form and supported by three reasons the meaning of the third you must have your own pace made clearer by denying the converse four and you must be open to all impressions and let your thoughts take color from what you see a fourth reason stated in two forms five you should be as a pipe for any wind to play upon the same reason stated in still another form six i cannot see the wit says hazlitt 
of walking and talking at the same time. 7. When I am in the country, I wish to vegetate like the country, which is a gist of all that can be said upon the matter. The same reason as stated by Hazlitt. 8. There should be no cackle of voices at your elbow to jar on the meditative silence of the morning. Repetition in paraphrase of the quotation from Hazlitt. 9. And so long as a man is a reasoning, he cannot surrender himself to that fine intoxication that comes of much motion in the open air, that begins in a sort of dazzle and sluggishness of the brain, and ends in a peace that passes comprehension. Stevenson, Walking Tours Final statement of the fourth reason, in language amplified and heightened to form a strong conclusion. 1. It was chiefly in the 18th century that a very different conception of history grew up. Topic sentence. 2. Historians then came to believe that their task was not so much to paint a picture as to solve a problem, to explain or illustrate the successive phases of national growth, prosperity, and adversity. The meaning of the topic sentence made clearer, the new conception of history defined. 3. The history of morals, of industry, of intellect, and of art. The changes that take place in manners or beliefs. The dominant ideas that prevailed in successive periods. The rise fall and modification of political constitutions. In a word, all the conditions of national well-being became the subjects of their works. The definition expanded. 4. They sought rather to write a history of peoples than a history of kings. The definition explained by contrast. 5. They looked especially in history for the chain of causes and effects. The definition supplemented another element in the new conception of history. 6. They undertook to study in the past the physiology of nations and hoped by applying the experimental method on a large scale to deduce some lessons of real value about the conditions on which the welfare of society mainly depend. Lecky, The Political Value of History Conclusion, An Important Consequence of the New Conception of History In narration and description, the paragraph sometimes begins with a concise, comprehensive statement serving to hold together the details that follow. The breeze served us admirably. The campaign opened with a series of reverses. The next ten or twelve pages were filled with a curious set of entries. But this device, if too often used, would become a mannerism. More commonly, the opening sentence simply indicates by its subject with what the paragraph is to be principally concerned. At length, I thought I might return towards the stockade. He picked up the heavy lamp from the table and began to explore. Another flight of steps, and they emerged on the roof. The brief paragraphs of animated narrative, however, are often without even this semblance of a topic sentence. The break between them serves the purpose of a rhetorical pause, throwing into prominence some detail of the action. End of section 3 Section 4 Elementary Principles of Composition Rules 11 to 13 11. Use the active voice 
the active voice is usually more direct and vigorous than the passive i shall always remember my first visit to boston this is much better than my first visit to boston will always be remembered by me the latter sentence is less direct less bold and less concise if the writer tries to make it more concise by omitting by me my first visit to boston will always be remembered it becomes indefinite is it the writer or some person undisclosed or the world at large that will always remember this visit this rule does not of course mean that the writer should actively discard the passive voice which is frequently convenient and sometimes necessary the dramatists of the restoration are little esteemed today modern readers have little esteem for the dramatists of the restoration the first would be the right form in a paragraph on the dramatists of the restoration the second in a paragraph on the tastes of modern readers the need of making a particular word the subject of the sentence will often as in these examples determine which voice is to be used the habitual use of the active voice however makes for forcible writing this is true not only in narrative principally concerned with action but in writing of any kind many a tame sentence of description or exposition can be made lively and emphatic by substituting a transitive in the active voice for some perfunctory expression as there is or could be heard there were a great number of dead leaves lying on the ground dead leaves covered the ground the sound of the falls could still be heard the sound of the falls still reached our ears the reason that he left college was that his health became impaired failing health compelled him to leave college it was not long before he was very sorry that he had said what he had he soon repented his words as a rule avoid making one passive depend directly upon another gold was not allowed to be exported it was forbidden to export gold the export of gold was prohibited he has been proved to have been seen entering the building it has been proved that he was seen to enter the building in both the examples above before correction the word properly related to the second passive is made the subject of the first a common fault is to use as the subject of a passive construction a noun which expresses the entire action leaving to the verb no function beyond that of completing the sentence a survey of this region was made in 1900 the region was surveyed in 1900 mobilization of the army was rapidly carried out the army was rapidly mobilized confirmation of these reports cannot be obtained these reports cannot be confirmed compare the sentence the export of gold was prohibited in which the predicate was prohibited expresses something not implied in export twelve put statements in positive form make definite assertions avoid tame colorless hesitating non-committal language use the word not as a means of denial 
or in antithesis, never as a means of evasion. He was not very often on time. He usually came late. He did not think that studying Latin was much use. He thought the study of Latin useless. The taming of the shrew is rather weak in spots. Shakespeare does not portray Catherine as a very admirable character. Nor does Bianca remain long in memory as an important character in Shakespeare's works. The women in The Taming of the Shrew are unattractive. Catherine is disagreeable, Bianca insignificant. The last example before correction is indefinite as well as negative. The corrected version, consequently, is simply a guess at the writer's intention. All three examples show the weakness inherent in the word not. Consciously or unconsciously, the reader is dissatisfied with being told only what is not. He wishes to be told what is. Hence, as a rule, it is better to express a negative in positive form. Not honest, dishonest, not important, trifling, did not remember, forgot, did not pay any attention to, ignored, did not have much confidence in, distrusted. The antithesis of negative and positive is strong. Not charity, but simple justice. Not that I loved Caesar less, but Rome the more. Negative words other than not are usually strong. The sun never sets upon the British flag. 13. Omit needless words. Vigorous writing is concise. A sentence should contain no unnecessary words, a paragraph no unnecessary sentences, for the same reason that a drawing should have no unnecessary lines and a machine no unnecessary parts. This requires not that the writer make all his sentences short or that he avoid all detail and treat his subjects only in outline, but that every word tell. Many expressions in common use violate this principle. The question as to whether, whether, the question whether. There is no doubt but that, no doubt, doubtless. Used for fuel purposes, used for fuel. He is a man who, he, in a hasty manner, hastily. This is a subject which, this subject, his story is a strange one. His story is strange. In a special, the expression, the fact that, should be revised out of every sentence in which it occurs. Owing to the fact that, since, because, in spite of the fact that, though, although, call your attention to the fact that, remind you, notify you, I was unaware of the fact that, I was unaware that, did not know, the fact that he had not succeeded, his failure, the fact that I had arrived, my arrival, See also, under Case, Character, Nature, System, in Chapter 5, Who is, which was, and the like, are often superfluous. His brother, who is a member of the same firm. His brother, a member of the same firm. Trafalgar, which was Nelson's last battle. Trafalgar, Nelson's last battle as positive statement is more concise than negative and the active voice more concise than the passive many of the examples given under rules eleven and twelve illustrate this rule as well a common violation of conciseness is the presentation of a single complex idea step by step in a series of sentences 
which might to advantage be combined into one. Macbeth was very ambitious. This led him to wish to become King of Scotland. The witches told him that this wish of his would come true. The King of Scotland at this time was Duncan. Encouraged by his wife, Macbeth murdered Duncan. He was thus enabled to succeed Duncan as king. 55 Words Encouraged by his wife, comma, Macbeth achieved his ambition and realized the prediction of the witches by murdering Duncan and becoming king of Scotland in his place. 26 Words Section 5. Elementary Principles of Composition, Rules 14 to 16. 14. Avoid a succession of loose sentences. This rule refers especially to loose sentences of a particular type, those consisting of two coordinate clauses, the second introduced by a conjunction or relative, although single sentences of this type may be unexceptionable see under rule four a series soon becomes monotonous and tedious an unskilful writer will sometimes construct a whole paragraph of sentences of this kind using as connectives and but and less frequently who which when where and while these last in non-restrictive senses see under rule three the third concert of the subscription series was given last evening and a large audience was in attendance mr edward appleton was the soloist and the boston symphony orchestra furnished the instrumental music the former showed himself to be an artist of the first rank, while the latter proved itself fully deserving of its high reputation. The interest aroused by the series has been very gratifying to the committee, and it is planned to give a similar series annually hereafter. The fourth concert will be given on Tuesday, May 10th, when an equally attractive program will be presented. Apart from its triteness and emptiness, the paragraph above is bad because of the structure of its sentences with their mechanical symmetry and sing-song. Contrast with them the sentences in the paragraphs quoted under Rule 10 or in any piece of good English prose as the preface before the curtain to Vanity Fair. If the writer finds that he has written a series of sentences of the type described, he should recast enough of them to remove the monotony, replacing them by simple sentences, by sentences of two clauses joined by a semicolon, by periodic sentences of two clauses, by sentences loose or periodic of three clauses, whichever best represent the real relations of the thought. 15. Express coordinate ideas in similar form. This principle, that of parallel construction, requires that expressions of similar content and function should be outwardly similar. The likeness of form enables the reader to recognize more readily the likeness of content and function. Familiar instances from the Bible are the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, and the petitions of the Lord's Prayer. The unskillful writer often violates this principle from a mistaken belief that he should constantly vary the form of his expressions. It is true that in repeating a statement in order to emphasize it, he may have need to vary its form. For illustration, see the paragraph from Stevenson, quoted under Rule 10. 
but apart from this he should follow the principle of parallel construction formerly comma, science was taught by the textbook method comma, while now the laboratory method is employed formerly comma, science was taught by the textbook method semicolon now it is taught by the laboratory method the left-hand version gives the impression that the writer is undecided or timid he seems unable or afraid to choose one form of expression and hold to it the right-hand version shows that the writer has at least made his choice and abided by it by this principle an article or a preposition applying to all the members of a series must either be used only before the first term or else be repeated before each term the french comma the italians comma spanish comma and portuguese the french comma the italians comma the spanish comma and the portuguese in spring, comma, summer, comma, or in winter. In spring, comma, summer, comma, or winter. In spring, comma, in summer, comma, or in winter. Correlative expressions, both, and, not, but, not only, but also, either, or, first, second, third, and the like, should be followed by the same grammatical construction many violations of this rule can be corrected by rearranging the sentence it was both a long ceremony and very tedious the ceremony was both long and tedious a time not for words comma but action a time not for words comma but for action either you must grant his request or incur his ill will you must either grant his request or incur his ill will my objections are comma, first comma, the injustice of the measure semicolon second comma, that it is unconstitutional my objections are comma, first comma, that the measure is unjust semicolon second comma that it is unconstitutional see also the third example under rule twelve and the last under rule thirteen it may be asked what if a writer needs to express a very large number of similar ideas say twenty must he write twenty consecutive sentences of the same pattern on closer examination he will probably find that the difficulty is imaginary that his twenty ideas can be classified in groups and that he need apply the principle only within each group otherwise he had best avoid the difficulty by putting his statements in the form of a table sixteen keep related words together the position of the words in a sentence is the principal means of showing their relationship the writer must therefore so far as possible bring together the words and groups of words that are related in thought and keep apart those which are not so related the subject of a sentence and the principal verb should not as a rule be separated by a phrase or clause that can be transferred to the beginning wordsworth comma, in the fifth book of the excursion comma, gives a minute description of this church in the fifth book of the excursion comma, wordsworth gives a minute description of this church cast iron comma, when treated in a bessemer converter comma, is changed into steel by treatment in a bessemer converter comma, cast iron is changed into steel the objection is that the interposed phrase or clause needlessly interrupts the natural order of the main clause 
the objection however does not usually hold when the order is interrupted only by a relative clause or by an expression in apposition nor does it hold in periodic sentences in which the interruption is a deliberately used means of creating suspense see examples under rule eighteen the relative pronoun should come as a rule immediately after its antecedent there was a look in his eye that boded mischief in his eye was a look that boded mischief he wrote three articles about his adventures in spain comma, which were published in harper's magazine he published in harper's magazine three articles about his adventures in spain this is a portrait of benjamin harrison comma, grandson of william henry harrison comma, who became president in eighteen eighty nine this is a portrait of benjamin harrison comma, grandson of william henry harrison period he became president in eighteen eighty nine if the antecedent consists of a group of words the relative comes at the end of the group unless this would cause ambiguity the superintendent of the chicago division comma, who a proposal to amend the sherman act comma, which has been variously judged a proposal comma, which has been variously judged comma, to amend the sherman act a proposal to amend the much debated sherman act the grandson of william henry harrison comma, who william henry harrison's grandson comma, benjamin harrison comma, who a noun in apposition may come between antecedent and relative because in such a combination no real ambiguity can arise the duke of york comma, his brother comma, who was regarded with hostility by the whigs modifiers should come if possible next to the word they modify if several expressions modify the same word they should be so arranged that no wrong relation is suggested all the members were not present not all the members were present he only found two mistakes he found only two mistakes major r e joyce will give a lecture on tuesday evening in bailey hall comma, to which the public is invited comma, on my experiences in mesopotamia at eight p m on tuesday evening at eight p m comma, major r e joyce will give in bailey hall a lecture on my experiences in mesopotamia period the public is invited section six elementary principles of composition rules seventeen to eighteen seventeen in summaries keep to one tense in summarizing the action of a drama the writer should always use the present tense in summarizing a poem story or novel he should preferably use the present though he may use the past if he prefers if the summary is in the present tense antecedent action should be expressed by the perfect if in the past by the past perfect an unforeseen chance prevents friar john from delivering friar lawrence's letter to romeo juliet meanwhile owing to her father's arbitrary change of the day set for her wedding has been compelled to drink the potion on tuesday night with the result that balthazar informs romeo of her supposed death before friar lawrence learns of the non-delivery of the letter but whichever tense be used in the summary a past tense in indirect discourse or in indirect question remains unchanged the legate inquires who struck the blow apart from the exceptions noted whichever tense the writer chooses he should use throughout 
shifting from one tense to the other gives the appearance of uncertainty and irresolution compare rule fifteen in presenting the statements or the thought of someone else as in summarizing an essay or reporting a speech the writer should avoid intercalating such expressions as he said he stated the speaker added the speaker then went on to say the author also thinks or the like he should indicate clearly at the outset once for all that what follows is summary and then waste no words in repeating the notification in notebooks in newspapers in handbooks of literature summaries of one kind or another may be indispensable and for children in primary schools it is useful exercise to retell a story in their own words but in the criticism or interpretation of literature the writer should be careful to avoid dropping into summary he may find it necessary to devote one or two sentences to indicating the subject or the opening situation of the work he is discussing he may cite numerous details to illustrate its qualities but he should aim to write an orderly discussion supported by evidence not a summary with occasional comment similarly if the scope of his discussion includes a number of works he will as a rule do better not to take them up singly in chronological order but to aim from the beginning at establishing general conclusions eighteen place the emphatic words of a sentence at the end the proper place for the word or group of words which the writer desires to make most prominent is usually the end of the sentence humanity has hardly advanced in fortitude since that time comma, though it has advanced in many other ways humanity comma, since that time comma, has advanced in many other ways comma, but it has hardly advanced in fortitude this steel is principally used for making razors comma, because of its hardness because of its hardness comma, this steel is principally used in making razors the word or group of words entitled to this position of prominence is usually the logical predicate that is the new element in the sentence as it is in the second example the effectiveness of the periodic sentence arises from the prominence which it gives to the main statement four centuries ago comma, christopher columbus comma, one of the italian mariners whom the decline of their own republics had put at the service of the world and of adventure comma, seeking for spain a westward passage to the indies as a set-off against the achievements of portuguese discoverers comma, lighted on america with these hopes and in this belief i would urge you comma, laying aside all hindrance comma, thrusting away all private aims comma, to devote yourselves unswervingly and unflinchingly to the vigorous and successful prosecution of this war the other prominent position in the sentence is the beginning any element in the sentence other than the subject becomes emphatic when placed first deceit or treachery he could never forgive so vast and rude comma, fretted by the action of nearly three thousand years comma, the fragments of this architecture may often seem comma, at first sight comma, like works of nature a subject coming first in its sentence may be emphatic but hardly by its position alone in the sentence great kings worshipped at his shrine comma, 
the emphasis upon kings arises largely from its meaning and from the context to receive special emphasis the subject of a sentence must take the position of the predicate through the middle of the valley flowed a winding stream the principle that the proper place for what is to be made most prominent is the end applies equally to the words of a sentence to the sentences of a paragraph and to the paragraphs of a composition end of section seven a few matters of form headings leave a blank line or its equivalent in space after the title or heading of a manuscript on succeeding pages if using ruled paper begin on the first line numerals do not spell out dates or other serial numbers write them in figures or in roman notation as may be appropriate august nine nineteen eighteen chapter x i i rule three three five two d infantry parentheses a sentence containing an expression in parenthesis is punctuated outside of the marks of parenthesis exactly as if the expression in parenthesis were absent the expression within is punctuated as if it stood by itself except that the final stop is omitted unless it is a question mark or an exclamation point i went to his house yesterday parenthesis my third attempt to see him and parenthesis comma but he had left town he declares parenthesis and why should we doubt his good faith question mark and parenthesis that he is now certain of success when a wholly detached expression or sentence is parenthesized the final stop comes before the last mark of parenthesis quotations formal quotations cited as documentary evidence are introduced by a colon and enclosed in quotation marks the provision of the constitution is colon quote, no tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state period end quote. quotations grammatically in apposition or the direct objects of verbs are preceded by a comma and enclosed in quotation marks i recall the maxim of la rochefoucauld comma quote, gratitude is a lively sense of benefits to come period end quote. aristotle says comma, quote, art is an imitation of nature period end quote. quotations of an entire line or more of verse are begun on a fresh line and centered but not enclosed in quotation marks wordsworth's enthusiasm for the revolution was at first unbounded colon bliss was it that dawn to be alive comma, but to be young was very heaven exclamation mark quotations introduced by that are regarded as in direct discourse and not enclosed in quotation marks keats declares that beauty is truth comma, truth beauty proverbial expressions and familiar phrases of literary origin require no quotation marks these are the times that try men's souls he lives far from the madding crowd the same is true of colloquialisms and slang references in scholarly work requiring exact references abbreviate titles that occur frequently giving the full forms in an alphabetical list at the end as a general practice give the references in parenthesis or in footnotes not in the body of the sentence omit the words act scene line book volume page except when referring by only one of them punctuate as indicated below in the second scene of the third act in capital i i i dot lowercase i i still better simply insert 
capital I I I dot lowercase I I in parenthesis at the proper place in the sentence. After the killing of Polonius, comma, Hamlet is placed under guard. Parenthesis capital I V dot lowercase I I dot space fourteen end parenthesis period. To Samuel, lowercase i, colon, 17 27. Othello, capital I, I, dot, lowercase i, 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 264 267, comma, space, capital I, 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 dot, lowercase I, 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 dot, space, 155 161. Titles. For the titles of literary works, scholarly usage prefers italics with capitalized initials. The usage of editors and publishers varies, some using italics with capitalized initials, others using Roman with capitalized initials and with or without quotation marks. Use italics indicated in manuscript by underscoring, except in writing for a periodical that follows a different practice. Omit either a or the from titles where you place the possessive before them. The italics Iliad, semicolon. The italics Odyssey, semicolon. Italics as you like it, semicolon. Italics to a skylark, semicolon. Italics the newcomes, semicolon. Italics a tale of two cities, semicolon. Dickens's Italics Tale of Two Cities Section 8 Words and Expressions Commonly Misused All Right to Most Many of the words and expressions here listed are not so much bad English as bad style, the commonplaces of careless writing. As illustrated under feature, the proper correction is likely to be not replacement of one word or set of words by another, but the replacement of vague generality by definite statement. All right. Idiomatic in familiar speech as a detached phrase in the sense agreed or go ahead. In other uses, better avoided. Always written as two words as good or better. Expressions of this type should be corrected by rearranging the sentence. My opinion is as good or better than his. My opinion is as good as his, comma, or better, if not better, as to whether. Whether is sufficient. See under rule 13. Bid takes the infinitive without to. The past tense is bayed. Case. The concise Oxford Dictionary begins its definition of this word. Quote, Instance of a thing's occurring. Usual state of affairs. End quote. In these two senses, the word is usually unnecessary. In many cases, comma, the rooms were poorly ventilated. Many of the rooms were poorly ventilated. It has rarely been the case that any mistake has been made. Few mistakes have been made. See Wood, Suggestions to Authors, pages 68 to 71, and Quiller Couch, The Art of Writing, pages 103 to 106. Certainly. Used indiscriminately by some speakers, much as others use very, to intensify any and every statement. A mannerism of this kind, bad in speech, is even worse in writing. Character, often simply redundant, used from a mere habit of wordiness. Acts of a hostile character, hostile acts, claim, verb with object noun, means lay claim to, may be used with a dependent clause if this sense is clearly involved. He claimed that he was the sole surviving heir. 
but even here claim to be would be better not to be used as a substitute for declare maintain or charge compare to compare to is to point out or imply resemblances between objects regarded as essentially of different order to compare with is mainly to point out differences between objects regarded as essentially of the same order thus life has been compared to a pilgrimage to a drama to a battle congress may be compared with the british parliament paris has been compared to ancient athens it may be compared with modern london clever this word has been greatly overused it is better restricted to ingenuity displayed in small matters consider not followed by as when it means believed to be i consider him thoroughly competent compare the lecturer considered cromwell first as soldier and second as administrator where considered means examined or discussed dependable a needless substitute for reliable trustworthy due to incorrectly used for through because of or owing to in adverbial phrases he lost the first game comma due to carelessness in correct use related as predicate or as modifier to a particular noun this invention is due to edison losses due to preventable fires effect as noun means result as verb means to bring about accomplish not to be confused with affect which means to influence as noun often loosely used in perfunctory writing about fashions music painting and other arts an oriental effect effects in pale green very delicate effects broad effects subtle effects a charming effect was produced by the writer who has a definite meaning to express will not take refuge in such vagueness etc not to be used of persons equivalent to and the rest and so forth and hence not to be used if one of these would be insufficient that is if the reader would be left in doubt as to any important particulars least open to objection when it represents the last terms of a list already given in full or immaterial words at the end of a quotation at the end of a list introduced by such as for example or any similar expression etc is incorrect fact use this word only of matters of a kind capable of direct verification not of matters of judgment that a particular event happened on a given date that lead melts at a certain temperature are facts but such conclusions as that napoleon was the greatest of modern generals or that the climate of california is delightful however incontestable they may be are not properly facts on the formula the fact that see under rule thirteen factor a hackneyed word the expressions of which it forms part can usually be replaced by something more direct and idiomatic his superior training was the great factor in his winning the match he won the match by being better trained heavy artillery is becoming an increasingly important factor in deciding battles heavy artillery is playing a larger and larger part in deciding battles feature another hackneyed word like factor it usually adds nothing to the sentence in which it occurs a feature of the entertainment especially worthy of mention was the singing of miss a better use the same number of words to tell what miss a sang or if the program has already been given to tell something of how she sang as a verb in the advertising sense of 
offer as a special attraction to be avoided fix colloquial in america for arrange prepare mend in writing restrict it to its literary senses fasten make firm or immovable etc he is a man who a common type of redundant expression see rule thirteen he is a man who is very ambitious he is very ambitious spain is a country which i have always wanted to visit i have always wanted to visit spain however in the meaning nevertheless not to come first in its sentence or clause the roads were almost impassable period however we at last succeeded in reaching camp the roads were almost impassable period at last comma however comma we succeeded in reaching camp when however comes first it means in whatever way or to whatever extent however you advise him comma he will probably do as he thinks best however discouraging the prospect comma he never lost heart kind of not to be used as a substitute for rather before adjectives and verbs or except in familiar style for something like before nouns restrict it to its literal sense amber is a kind of fossil resin i dislike that kind of notoriety the same holds true of sort of less should not be misused for fewer he had less men than in the previous campaign he had fewer men than in the previous campaign less refers to quantity fewer to number his troubles are less than mine means his troubles are not so great as mine his troubles are fewer than mine means his troubles are not so numerous as mine it is however correct to say the signers of the petition were less than a hundred where the round number a hundred is something like a collective noun and less is thought of as meaning a less quantity or amount line along these lines line in the sense of course of procedure conduct thought is allowable but has been so much overworked particularly in the phrase along these lines that a writer who aims at freshness or originality had better discard it entirely mr b also spoke along the same lines mr b also spoke comma to the same effect he is studying along the line of french literature he is studying french literature literal literally often incorrectly used in support of exaggeration or violent metaphor a literal flood of abuse a flood of abuse literally dead with fatigue almost dead with fatigue dead tired lose out meant to be more emphatic than lose but actually less so because of its commonness the same holds true of try out win out sign up register up where the number of verbs out and up form idiomatic combinations find out run out turn out cheer up dry up make up and others each distinguishable in meaning from the simple verb lose out is not most not to be used for almost most everybody almost everybody most all the time almost all the time end of section a section nine words and expressions commonly misused nature to wood nature often simply redundant used like character acts of a hostile nature hostile acts often vaguely used in such expressions as a lover of nature poems about nature 
unless more specific statements follow the reader cannot tell whether the poems have to do with natural scenery rural life the sunset the untracked wilderness or the habits of squirrels nearby adverbial phrase not yet fully accepted as good english though the analogy of close by and hard by seems to justify it near or near at hand is as good if not better not to be used as an adjective use neighboring oftentimes oft times archaic forms no longer in good use the modern word is often one hundred and one retain the and in this and similar expressions in accordance with the unvarying usage of english prose from old english times one of the most avoid beginning essays or paragraphs with this formula as one of the most interesting developments of modern science is etc switzerland is one of the most interesting countries of europe there is nothing wrong in this it is simply threadbare and forcible feeble people the people is a political term not to be confused with the public from the people comes political support or opposition from the public comes artistic appreciation or commercial patronage the word people is not to be used with words of number in place of persons if of six people five went away how many people would be left phase means a stage of transition or development the phase of the moon the last phase not to be used for aspect or topic another phase of the subject another point another question possess not to be used as a mere substitute for have or own he possessed great courage he had great courage was very brave he was the fortunate possessor of he owned respective respectively these words may usually be omitted with advantage works of fiction are listed under the names of their respective authors works of fiction are listed under the names of their authors the one mile and two mile runs were won by jones and cummings respectively the one mile and two mile runs were won by jones and by cummings in some kinds of formal writing as in geometrical proofs it may be necessary to use respectively but it should not appear in writing on ordinary subjects so avoid in writing the use of so as an intensifier so good so warm so delightful on the use of so to introduce clauses see rule four sort of see under kind of state not to be used as a mere substitute for say remark restrict it to the sense of express fully or clearly as he refused to state his objections student body a needless and awkward expression meaning no more than the simple word students a member of the student body a student popular with the student body liked by the students the student body passed resolutions the students passed resolutions system frequently used without need dayton has adopted the commission system of government dayton has adopted government by commission the dormitory system dormitories thanking you in advance this sounds as if the writer meant it will not be worth my while to write to you again simply write thanking you and if the favor which you have requested is granted write a letter of acknowledgment they a common inaccuracy is the use of the plural pronoun when the antecedent is a distributive expression such as each each one everybody 
everyone, many a man, which, though implying more than one person, requires the pronoun to be in the singular. Similar to this, but with even less justification, is the use of the plural pronoun with the antecedent anybody, anyone, somebody, someone, the intention being either to avoid the awkward he or she, or to avoid committing oneself to either. Some bashful speakers even say, A friend of mine told me that they, etc. Use he with all the above words, unless the antecedent is or must be feminine. Very. Use this word sparingly. Where emphasis is necessary, use words strong in themselves. Viewpoint. Right point of view. But do not misuse this, as many do, for view or opinion. While. Avoid the indiscriminate use of this word for, and, but, and although. Many writers use it frequently as a substitute for and or but, either from a mere desire to vary the connective, or from uncertainty which of the two connectives is the more appropriate. In this use, it is best replaced by a semicolon. This is entirely correct, as shown by the paraphrase. The office and sales rooms are on the ground floor, comma, while the rest of the building is devoted to manufacturing. The office and sales rooms are on the ground floor, semicolon. The rest of the building is devoted to manufacturing. Its use as a virtual equivalent of although is allowable in sentences where this leads to no ambiguity or absurdity. While I admire his energy, comma, I wish it were employed in a better cause. I admire his energy, semicolon. At the same time, I wish it were employed in a better cause. Compare. While the temperature reaches 90 or 95 degrees in the daytime, comma, the nights are often chilly. Although the temperature reaches 90 or 95 degrees in the daytime, comma, the nights are often chilly. The paraphrase, the temperature reaches 90 or 95 degrees in the daytime, semicolon, at the same time, the nights are often chilly, shows why the use of while is incorrect. In general, the writer will do well to use while only with strict literalness, in the sense of during the time that. Whom, often incorrectly used, for who, before he said, or similar expressions, when it is really the subject of a following verb. His brother, comma, who he said, would send him the cheese. His brother, comma, whom he said, would send him the money. The man whom, that, he thought was his friend, whom he thought his friend, the man who he thought was his friend. Worthwhile. Overworked as a term of vague approval, and, with not, of disapproval, strictly applicable only to actions. Is it worth while to telegraph? His books are not worth while. His books are not worth reading, not worth one's while to read. Do not repay reading. The use of worth while before a noun, a worthwhile story, is indefensible. Would a conditional statement in the first person requires should, not would. I should not have succeeded without his help. The equivalent of shall in indirect quotation after a verb in the past tense is should, not would. He predicted that before long we should have a great surprise. To express habitual or repeated action, the past tense without would, is usually sufficient, and from its brevity more emphatic. Once a year he would visit the old mansion. Once a year he visited the old mansion. Section 10. Words commonly misspelled. Accidentally. A-C-C-I-D-E-N-T-A-L-L-Y. Accidentally. Advice. A D V I C E. Advice. Affect. 
A F F E C T effect beginning B E G I N N I N G beginning believe B E L I E V E believe benefit B E N E F I T benefit challenge C H A L L E N G E challenge Criticize, C-R-I-T-I-C-I-Z-E, criticize. Deceive, D-E-C-E-I-V-E, deceive. Definite, D-E-F-I-N-I-T-E, definite. Describe, D-E-S-C-R-I-B-E, describe. Despise, D-E-S-P-I-S-E, despise. Develop, D E V. E L O P develop disappoint D I S A P P O I N T disappoint dual D U E L dual ecstasy E C S T A S Y ecstasy effect E F F E C T effect Existence, E-X-I-S-T-E-N-C-E, -E. existence. Fiery, F-I-E-R-Y, fiery. Formerly, F-O-R-M-E-R-L-Y, formerly. Humorous, H-U-M-O-R-O-U-S, humorous. Hypocrisy, h y p O C R I S Y hypocrisy immediately I M M E D I A T E L Y immediately incidentally I N C I D E N T A L L Y incidentally ladder L A T T E R ladder lead L E D lead lose L O S E lose marriage M A R R I A G E marriage mischief M I S C H I E F mischief murmur M U R M U R murmur necessary N E C E S S A R Y necessary occurred O C C U R R E D occurred. Parallel P A R A L L E L parallel. Philip P H I L I P Philip. Playwright P L A Y W R I G H T playwright. Proceeding P R E C E D I N G proceeding. Prejudice. P R E J U D I C E prejudice principle P R I N C I P A L principle privilege P R I V I L E G E privilege pursue P U R S U E pursue repetition R E P E T I T I O N repetition Rhyme, R H Y M E, rhyme. Rhythm, R H Y T H M, rhythm. Ridiculous, R I D I C U L O U S, ridiculous. Sacrilegious, S A C R I L E G I O U S, sacrilegious. Seize, S E I Z E, seize. Separate. S E P A R A T E separate shepherd S H E P H E R D shepherd siege S I E G E siege similar S I M I L A R similar simile S I M I L E simile two T O O two tragedy T R A G E D Y tragedy tries 
T-R-I-E-S, tries. Undoubtedly, U-N-D-O-U-B-T-E-D-L-Y, undoubtedly. Until, U-N-T-I-L, until. Write, today, T-O-D-A-Y. Tonight, T-O-N-I-G-H-T. Tomorrow, T-O-M-O-R-R-O-W, but not together, with hyphen. Write any space one, every space one, some space one, some space time, except the sense of formerly, as two words. The end.